Hey everyone and welcome back. It's Abby from Abby Road Creations and today I want to share with you guys how to make a whimsical pendant using a large bead. So in today's tutorial I'll be using a 12 millimeter obsidian bead. You can use any size that you have. Just keep in mind that if you go and use smaller then it may be a bit more difficult to work with the design because you'll have a bit less space. But if you only have eight millimeter beads, definitely go ahead and give this a try because it's a really fun design to try out. You will also need four wires. So the size that I'm using is two 26 gauge wires and then two 22 gauge wires. All right, so you just wanna make sure that whatever wires you're using will fit into the hole of your bead. So if you want to go larger, you can. If you want to go smaller, I wouldn't suggest going much smaller than 26 gauge. You could use four 26 gauge wires if you want to, but 28 gauge, it might just make it a bit more difficult to keep the design stable because the wire won't be strong enough. All right, so for the lengths of these, I have, these are about eight inch pieces. So once again, that's two eight inch pieces of 22 gauge and two eight inch pieces of 26 gauge. You will also need some little beads. I'm using two millimeter and three millimeter silver beads. And I'm also using a four millimeter bead to put on top here to swirl the wire around. For your tools, you will need your basic tools of chain nose pliers, round nose pliers, and wire cutters. And I do suggest that you use flush cutters because they do give a better finish to the end of the wire. But if you don't have them, then don't worry about it. Just go with what you have, okay? All right, let's get started. So I like to start by putting the four wires into the bead directly before I start twisting the wires. I've just found this to be easier for me. Just work those wires into the bead and try to line them up. We're going to slide the bead about, leaving about three inches here. Okay. Now using either your hands or your pliers, if you're using your pliers, remember to be gentle with the wire. We're going to pinch with that left hand and start turning, twisting with the right. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just so all the wires are kind of grouped together on the top. And now we can start spreading out these bottom wires. So we do want two of each on each side. So I'm going to start with my 22 gauge wires. Just kind of pull them to each side and the 26 gauge wires. We are then just gonna start pulling them up to frame the outside of the bead. You can choose whether you want the 26 gauge wire in the front or the 22 gauge wire in the front. Okay, starting with one side, work the wires up to that stem right there. And once you have everything looking good, the way that you want it, it's all lined up, you can go ahead and just twist the wire around, which will kind of secure everything into place right there. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with the other side. Just simply bend these wires up. You can move those others out of the way if they're in your way. And then we're going to wrap it around that top part. Okay. You can take some time to pinch and get everything into place. So here is where we get to start the fun part by doing the design. So 
just a heads up, your design may end up looking different than mine. That's okay. Um, I feel like every time I make these are a little bit different too. So we'll just learn as we go, okay? So let's start with this left side and continue wrapping it around one more time just to make sure both of those wires are very secure. Okay. These wires should be on the right hand side now on the top at the front of your pendant. You're going to grab that smaller wire, the 26 gauge wire is the, is the smaller wire on mine. And I'm going to go ahead and put that little accent bead on. Now I'm using four millimeter faceted just glass or crystal beads. They have a nice little shine on one side. If you are using beads that have a shine on a specific surface like labradorite or moonstone, just make sure that the bead will shine when the pendant is held up in the light or because sometimes you may have to put the bead on a different way. All right, that looks good. All right, so now that that is there, we are just going to secure that bead. So the wire is on the right side. We are just going to wrap it around that stem part twice. Okay, just push that out of the way for now. We don't need it at this very moment. And now to kind of make this bead stand out, to make it look like it's in case, kind of like a cabochon, we are going to wrap that 22 gauge wire just in a circle around the bead. Okay, you can do it once, twice, just whatever it takes and before you like the design. All right, so I did about one and a half times. My wire is now at the bottom of the crystal. So now I am just going to wrap it around about a half a time so it's on the left hand side and now we can take a step back and see what we want to do next so i think one of my favorite parts about this design are these little beads that go around the crystal that i put right there so we're going to go ahead and do the same with this one and the way that we're going to do that is i'm going to take this thinner 26 gauge wire mine is on the right hand side i'm just going to pull it across so it's on the left hand side and I'm going to go ahead and put some beads on. I'll be using three two millimeter and two three millimeter beads. So all I'm going to do is simply curve this wire around to this kind of framing that bead right there and then I'm simply just going to secure it by wrapping it around that top twisted stem part two times. So now I want to add a bit more body on this right hand side to kind of fill in this negative space. To do that I'm going to take this 22 gauge wire that I have on the left and then kind of just curve it up and try to make a nice elegant curve around that bead. Let's see. Yeah, I think something like that could be nice. So all I did was I curved it up around and I'm still on top of this wire. And I'm going to once again secure that around the twisted wire up top. And now I'm just going to push this up front because I think I'm going to be using this next, but I do want one of these wires 
to go with it. So let's see. Yeah, I am just going to pull down this lower wire right here. And like I said at the beginning, guys, at this point, your design may be different than mine. So just feel free to listen along and use it as inspiration to create your own personal design with this, all right? So my goal here is I want to kind of create like a doubled wire design because I think that looks really cute. So I'm just going to try and group both of these here. I want that to kind of be on the inside. So I'm just going to use my fingers to kind of push and curve the wire. Give it some little loop-de-loops. And if you have trouble working with both wires at the same time, feel free to work one at a time. Especially whenever you're using different thicknesses of wire, it can be difficult to control two wires at the same time. Okay, I think I may add two more little beads there on that thinner wire. Just two of the two millimeter beads. All right, and to make sure that those beads stay in place, I'm going to wrap that thin wire around this frame here. But as you can see, that frame is really close to the bead. So in order to do that, I see that there's a gap here at the bottom. So I am just going to work the wire through that gap. And even though it's lower than what I want that wire to be, once the wire is underneath those, I can slide it up to wherever I want it to be. If you don't have any gaps in your frame, don't worry, what you can do is you can grab a toothpick or even maybe like a sewing needle to very gently try to create some leverage and to create a gap in the design. Okay. Now I'm just gonna finish off with a little curl And I'm going to snip the wire just right there. Okay, feel free to adjust it with your round nose pliers. And to make sure that this is secured, I conveniently have this weaving wire here that I can wrap around one or two more times to keep that in place. There's one. I want to do it just one more time. And the more you get into wire wrapping, the more you will learn that one of the most time consuming parts of wire wrapping is trying to fit wires into little tiny spaces in order to secure the design at the very end. All right, we are almost finished. Just remember to always take a step back, look at your design to make sure you like how everything is going before you clip all of your wires off. So I think here I'm just going to simply pull this thin weaving wire down to mimic that line that we have there. And then just find somewhere to wrap it around this base of the design. Okay. 
Okay, and I am done using this one. If you still wanna do a few more designs with it, feel free to. But I'm gonna go ahead and step mine off somewhere where I can hide that wire end, which will be on the back. to use my chain nose pliers to tuck that in. There's no risk of it coming back out. Clip it up a little more. Okay, and now we just have this top wire here. I think all I wanna do I'll just make a final curl at the top here. All right, so before I cut that, I just wanna make sure that everything is still gonna look the same once we finish the bell. So we're gonna take that twisted wire now and just start bending it back to make the chain loop. Okay. So I think I want mine to just be right up here at the top. And I'm gonna wrap this wire around right there. And I'm gonna work that in with the design of that swirl I just did. I always like to take my chain nose pliers Pinch. I'm actually going to lift this up because it is kind of in my way. I apologize for that, guys. So I'm just going to find a way to wrap this around. And I've always done this step at the end. Um, you guys might find a better method, like maybe doing it at the beginning, but for some reason I've just always found it more comforting to do it at the end just to make sure that everything kind of goes in together and I have the right height that I want. So I'm just going to clip those wires up. You can do them one at a time if you feel more comfortable doing that. And we're going to pinch that in. All right, so all I did is I just pushed that right back down. And, yep, I'm gonna clip that off and our design will be ready. All right, and here she is. So I chose black for this design because I do plan on oxidizing the metal to give it an antique silver finish. And that just wasn't really possible with the quartz because it would also oxidize the wire in the transparent crystal. So I think with the obsidian, it's gonna be really nice once the wire is antiqued. Hope you guys enjoyed this and have a magical day.